Hey guys, Editing Bonk here with just a quick editor's note. I recorded this at 11.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So if I seem a little sleepy in the last quarter of this video, it's because I am, she. <laughs> also, shout out to Swift for letting me use his basement to record this shit. But yeah, this is an unedited video, guys. Feel free to listen along like it was a podcast. But enjoy and happy holidays. Ho, 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 ho! Ooh, that was some pretty good hoeing, if I do say so myself. Hey, how's it going, you swell individuals? On today's holiday-themed tier list, yes, we're gonna be ranking the Genshin characters by how good they would be as mall Santa. <laughs> no. This video was inspired by all the mall Santas that look like they want to commit toaster bath. Like, it's kind of sad. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and have you guys seen the little elves that stay by the mall Santa's side? Bro, they always look so depressed. It's kind of shag. <laughs> but yeah, this isn't going to be your standard mall Santa tier list though. No, this is going to be mall Santa Wars. We're going to say this is a huge ass mall in Teyvat and there's going to be four mall Santas in the same mall in each like quadrant. So you have North, West, East, South Santa. All four of those Santas are going to be competing for who is king or queen of this specific mall. Yes. So it's going to be groups of four like I kind of explained. And we're going to be deciding the groups with the spinny wheel of spinniness. Yes. And after we put each character in their respective tier, we will rank them from first to fourth place and see who the best mall Santas would be. Because some of these characters definitely have that real Santa energy. Yes. This isn't just a job. Nah. They're knocking on your door with presents on Christmas Day. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the first Santa Wars contestants. Yes. Also, the kids are included because I'm not biased. No, 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 no. Oh, fine. <laughs> Personally, this is the type of chick I'm keeping my kids away from. This is some bad influence energy right here. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Okay, I know they're trying to out Santa each other. But Layla and Miko is one of the only wholesome interactions Miko has in like the whole game. It's precious. But yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes. Okay. There's a lot of different audiences that this set of characters is appealing to. We have Fischl. For the kids, I think she'd be kind of amazing. Wait. Actually though? <laughs> oh <hey. laughs> Bro, we got the four walks of life right here. We got Zhang Dong as the final Santa. Okay, I kind of want to get the elephant out of the room. Yes, or should I say the fox? Because I think Miko might traumatize a child. <laughs> and there's a couple of reasons why I'm putting her here. One, I'm not even sure if she'd try to convince the kids to be good. Because she's like a mischievous fox, right? So maybe she would corrupt the child's sense of morality, and then the kids are pulling pranks on Christmas Day. Or, if you want to go the other side of things and say she would be a good influence, I feel like she's gonna low-key, like, threaten the kids to be good. Like, she's gonna be like, all right, if you're not a nice boy, a fox is gonna come from under your bed and swallow your soul. <laughs> like, regardless, unless I'm a single father looking at this chick with my child, I'm gonna be giving her dirty looks. It's a bit much. <laughs> now, as for Layla, this is kind of interesting because of the split personality shtick. So, ooh, ooh, this is kind of a hot take. It's a really hot take. What if she falls asleep mid job, like as she's on the payroll kind of shtick, and she goes into maximum overdrive and gets all like peppy? And the kids start to love her. However, this is only for like half the time. When she is in that sleep mode, I think the kids are just going to gravitate away from her Santa booth, if you will. They'll go to see the other Santas, but the few kids that actually go to see her, I think would be kind of wholesome. I think it's kind of adorable. <laughs> 
So with that in mind, I'm gonna say some kids love her while some don't really like her vibe. Yeah, it depends what state she's in, but it's definitely some hit or miss material, yes. As for Zhang Dong and Fischl, I'm actually gonna leave them both in this tier they're in for completely different reasons. <laughs> so, Daddy Zhang Dong, Peppy, is a very by the books contract kind of guy. So, when he signs that job application to be the mall Santa, he is gonna give it his 150%. The only issue with this is I think a lot of kids are gonna find this man boring, while a lot of the parents are gonna find him wholesome. All of the moms and dads are gonna be seeing how much effort he's putting in and are gonna be like, aw, this is kinda sweet. But the kids are gonna be like, yawn, I want my Xbox, bitch. Maybe some kids would like him, yeah. I think he'd have a very specific demographic. And as for Fischl, bro. <laughs> She is a hundred percent the chick who's getting dirty looks from the parents, but the kids are gonna adore her. It's kind of the opposite of Zhang Dong because she has that childlike wonder to her that would appeal to any child. And even though the parents, when the kid goes back to them, are like, did that girl say anything funny to you? They're not gonna snitch on Fischl because they're happy. And she gave them a bunch of candy probably. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this group. Kind of a nice mix of characters. And even though they're in a specific order, it doesn't mean that's gonna be the final ranking. However, in this case, I'm gonna say it is. Probably for most cases, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I think Fischl is gonna be the best Zhang Dong second, Layla third, Yai Miko fourth. Not really surprised there. <laughs> now on to the next. Ho 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 ha! Seven characters, yes. Oh fuck. <laughs> If Santa was a drill sergeant, oof. <laughs> I feel like kids are gonna be kind of scared of her. No. <laughs> nah, the kids wouldn't be scared of her, but I would be fucking traumatized, I tell you that. We got the sleep demon, that is Sijween, for those who don't know. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I'm just kinda, ooh, if that was Zhao, this matchup would have been so cursed. But Zheng Ling is a child herself, so I think she'd kind of bond with the wholesome kids, yeah. Oh hell no, no, okay. <laughs> I think there's a very clear winner <laughs> in this roster. <laughs> but we'll still get into the explanations for the group, yeah. So we'll start off with Sara. I think the kids are for the most part kind of gonna hate her. <laughs> Like a child is just gonna walk up, sit on her lap, and she's gonna be like, have you been a good Inazuman citizen? And they're like, um, so I want an Xbox? And she's like, answer the question, child. Then we'll talk about your compensation. Half of the kids are gonna be running home crying. And honestly, I think after a while, she might start to feel really bad. Like, I kind of feel sad now. <laughs> but also the parents, I think, would be giving her dirty looks just because half the time she has like the resting bitch face and you don't want your child going up to someone like that. Like, not really. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna say she traumatizes a child. As for Sayu, ooh, I'm wondering if she's gonna show up for this job. Ooh, ooh, okay, wait, side note. For the small characters, just picture them on like stilts and with a beard, yeah. So she's gonna have these really long leg things that make her look tall. And she's gonna feel so proud of herself, yes. So anyway, Sayu is gonna show up just to show off how tall she is in the moment. But I think it's gonna be a minimum wage, minimum effort kind of thing. I think she's gonna do her damnedest at first, but after a while, when she gets tired, she's just like, bring on the next child. What do you want, little shit? <laughs> nah, she's not swearing at anyone because she's wholesome. But I think a lot of the kids will get bored after a while. I'm sure the parents are gonna be launching some complaints about both her and Sara, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, as for Sijween and Zhang Ling. Sijween, 
I think could be wholesome. She might get carried away about like personal space though. She's like, what did you eat for breakfast? Oh, you didn't have enough calcium. And she goes full weird psycho mother mode, if that makes any sense. And then once she's done with the child, she's gonna write like a whole little notebook and give it to the parents. And she's like, yeah, do a better job at parenting. <laughs> I don't know, she's kind of trippy to picture because we don't know that much about her aside from the whole human emotions kind of creepy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that said, she might also scare some kids, but not that many. So I do think it would be a whole Wholesome. She just gets carried away. As for Zhang Ling, this is our first top tier ho 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 energy Santa. Yeah. I never thought I'd see Zhang Ling above everyone else. Kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, she's hyped and peppy enough and not so out there like Fischl is that I think literally all the kids would love her. The parents would too. She's the type to go the extra mile for the sad kids. Yeah. Ooh, wait, what if she has like a little tent behind her Santa chair and inside the tent is a bunch of food to give to the sad little boys and girls? Yes, mind you, this might be considered a bribe to some people, but nah, she's just trying to make the child's day better. It's gonna be a nice time, yeah. So with that said, let's rank these four. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> In first place, we got Zhang Ling, second place, Si Jwin, third place, Sayu, and fourth place, Madame Kujo Sada. Yes, on to the next list of mall Santas. <laughs> Socially awkward mall Santa that does his best? That's kind of a vibe, yeah. We got the boy Mika. Kind of a hit or miss, I think, depending on the child, but still. Very wholesome indeed, yeah. All right. Now, why does Paimon give me vibes that she would start arguing with some of the kids? Yeah, wait. Because she low-key has the mentality of a child herself. They're gonna argue about present. Okay, we'll get into that in the explanation. <laughs> If we got that next character, it would have been an automatic win in my book. But we have Kazuzu! He's a bit of the wanderer. Maybe he'd actually deliver gifts. That'd be kind of cute. <laughs> oh, this is a weird match. This is a weird ass matchup. <laughs> and finally, we have Chi Chi. This is odd. This is very odd. That's an understatement. <laughs> Okay, so we'll start off with Chi Chi because she's kind of the weirdest one. Not just because she's small, because of the memory thing. So I'm gonna say she forgets to show up for Mall Santa duties. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Cancel that. What if Baiju? Okay, wait. We're having a whole plot for this chick. <laughs> Chi Chi's gonna go to Baiju's pharmacy, right? She's gonna go see dad. And she's gonna say, Baiju, I have a part time job as a mall Santa. And he's gonna be like, So do you know what a mall Santa is? And she's like, No. <laughs> he's gonna give her a full rundown of how to be an awesome mall Santa. She's gonna be taking notes in the notebook. And then when it comes time to put on the beard to get those stilts on, I think some kids will love her and some will hate her. Yeah because she's gonna have the effort card. She'll even look at her notebook for nice things to say like every now and then, but it's the energy that's gonna turn a lot of the kids away. They're gonna be like, you're boring. Mom, can we get the heck out of here? I know you're buying me that Xbox. Like, I'm gonna hate you if you don't. I hate children like that so much. <laughs> Privileged. But yeah, it's definitely a hit or miss with Chi Chi. So as for Mika, I kind of want to say it's similar. Because of the energy and social anxiety, some people would be like, ugh, you're boring, my god, where's your ho-ho-ho spirit? Wait, imagine Mika trying to ho-ho-ho. Like, why can I imagine before he, like, walks onto the chair, he's practicing his, like, pitch, like, his Christmas voice, but he'll still have moments where he freezes up in front of the kids. But yeah, at least he'll put in the effort, which is nice. Honestly, him and Chi Chi would be a really interesting Santa off. I don't know who's winning that. 
<laughs> Next we have Paimon. Bro, she is going to be arguing with the kids. She's going to be getting dirty looks from the parents and not even traumatizing children. Nah, the children are going to traumatize her. 100% dog. So the kids are going to go up to her and they're going to be like, you don't look anything like Santa. <laughs> And she's going to be like, listen, it doesn't matter what I look like. Now, what do you want for Christmas? And then they're going to start arguing. Paimon's going to be like, listen, bitch, I'm actually from Celestia, which is the closest thing to the North Pole. <laughs> But yes, after a while, the parents are going to be like, Timmy, get away from that flying lavender melon. And Paimon's like, who are you calling lavender? Like, nah. <laughs> it's going to be a whole ass squabble. She's going to get escorted out of the mall <laughs> by security. <laughs> but yeah, she, she's not going to be doing the best. As for Kazuzu, I think he might get a bit of dirty looks from some parents because he kind of always looks like he's high on life like he's always on cloud nine even though he isn't like he's a wholesome dude and honestly he gives me a lot of santa vibes just because he's always wandering around so he could in theory deliver some gifts yeah even though he is a mall santa i don't think he's quite real santa material nah this is for the top Pop dogs, okay? <laughs> I have been thinking about this, actually. I'm gonna move Fischl up to here, because I do think she would be amazing. Kazuzu, though, I think it would just be wholesome, not necessarily in the Gets Carried Away book, but just kind of like a nice visit. I don't think he's quite like top tier energy for Santa just because of how chill he is. But the parents are going to love how dapper of a Santa he is. The kids will be kind of chill with him. So yeah, as for the ranking of group number three, I'm going to say first place is Kazuzu. Pretty obvious. Then we have Mika in second and Chi Chi in third. I put Mika above Chi-Chi just because he doesn't have to look at a notebook to remind him of certain things. And then Paimon, I put in fourth. On to group number four, yes. I need to put some out of my 20, I think it's 20, yeah. Well! Hello, Child Protective Services. <laughs> no! This could only be bad. I cannot see a positive way where Dottore is Santa, guys. Like, oh god, I feel bad. I feel bad, bro. He needs to be exiled from this list. We'll get into it. Oh, Lord. Lord, please have mercy. Before, we had injustice. Now we have justice in Jing Huh. I think he'd be pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah we'll be dapper. He'd be a good Santa. Okay. Ayaka's definitely a wholesome Santa. I just feel like she might get carried away with promises. But we'll see. Ugh. All right, besides for that first character, we have a group of very sophisticated, cultured individuals. All right, so I have a solution for the Dottore problem. He's just not showing up for work. <laughs> now, I feel like he's the type to value his time way too much for him to do something like being a mall Santa. Like, I don't know how he got roped into doing this to begin with maybe piero or capitano like his two supervisors are like dottore go increase the rep of the fatui by making kids happy for christmas and he's like is it possible for me to do anything and then capitano's like no never mind it's not happening get the fuck out <laughs> like this man is getting canceled at mock speed it's not going down <laughs> as for the uh group of three because this is a three person competition low-key i'm gonna say the person who would get along with the kids the most is jingcho because he's kind of like, in a way, immature. Like, it's weird. He's mature in certain subjects, and in others, he has like a childlike wonder to him. Like, you know when he's teasing Chung Yun? Kind of like that. So, ooh, ooh! And also, he's rich! But then again, I think all three of these characters have a bit of money. So I think to the kids who he really vibes with that are being really chill with their Christmas demands, <laughs> he's going to go up to the parents after. Yes, miss, your child wants a PS5. Here's $500. Go buy him that shit immediately, good madam. Like he's going to be a walking charity of a mall Santa, which is really wholesome. Yeah. 
As for Ayaka, ooh, she's the type to be chill on the day, but get complaints afterwards. Let me explain. So, <laughs> she's gonna promise kids all these nice things in the moment just because she wants them to be happy. But then, when she gets home, Ayato's like, Ayaka, how was your job? And she's like, I think I screwed up. I promised a little girl a pony. But how the hell are her parents gonna get her that? <laughs> the parents are gonna be knocking on the Kamisato estate like, You promised my daughter this! How the hell am I supposed to afford that? I work at a subway, bitch! You think my paycheck can afford a pony? Ooh, ooh! Maybe after that, though, Ayato's like, Ayaka, let me handle this! And then, Ayato starts giving out presents for Ayaka, yeah! Because he's the rich, rich man. So he gets a horse, puts a little pointy hat on its head. He's like, there, there's your unicorn. There's your pony. Now take it and leave. <laughs> like it's going to be that SpongeBob episode at Squidward's house where he's giving away all his shit just to make the kids happy. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. But either way, it's going to be wholesome, but she gets carried away. Yeah. As for Yun Jin, I'm just going to say she's wholesome as well. I don't think she's quite top tier ho 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 energy for the Santa Claus, but I do think she's chill and social enough to get along with the kids and make them kind of happy. Yeah. I do think she'd be a little better than Ayaka in the sense that she's not going to be making promises she can't keep. Like, if a child is asking for some ridiculous demands, she's gonna be like, well, how rich are your parents? And the kid's like, um, well, my dad's a garbage truck driver. She's like, ha ha, maybe next year, little son. She's gonna hit the kids with the reality check. If your parents aren't making enough, Santa's not visiting that house. It'd be wholesome in an interesting kind of way. We'll put her at, like, the bottom, though. <laughs> now, as for the ranking. <laughs> so, for first place, Jing Cho. Fourth place, Dottore. Second and third are kind of interchangeable, with Yun Jin at second. Ayaka in third. That's gonna be the ranking for this group. Next team. <laughs> I have a very clear tier placement in mind for this swell lad. But we have Al Haytham as Santa, bro. The most unenthusiastic Santa you've ever seen. Should be good. Should be really good. This is gonna be a hot take, but I think Cushing is kind of a top tier Santa. Yeah. We'll get into the explanation, but she's pretty good. The purple cat, yes. <laughs> Next, we got Tiggy Cakes, bruh. Every interaction with this man is funny just because of how sassy he is. So him being sassy with a child. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That was close. That was so close. And finally, we have Mr. Aether, the MC, who I'm going to say is the main character. Yeah. For the siblings, the one we get first will be MC. The other will be the Abyss sibling. So Lumine, you're going to be Krampus for the evening. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say, this is probably the best, most well-rounded group of Santas we got so far. We got Al Haytham first. He is 100%. Minimum wage, minimum effort. He is not giving a shit. If a kid is crying on his lap, he's gonna be like, all right, this is above my pay grade. Hey, father, mother, come get your child. He's being annoying. <laughs> nah, and he's definitely gonna be a very realistic Santa. Like, kind of similar to what I was mentioning with Yun Jin. If your parents are working some low-end jobs, he's gonna be like, yeah, you're not getting that for Christmas. Maybe when you grow up and become a member of society, then you'll get some nice presents from yourself. Because that's how it goes. I do think the parents are kind of gonna like him when he's not making the children cry. Because he does look like a baddie for a lot of the single mothers out there, I'm sure. But definitely, minimum wage, minimum effort, yes. Then we'll do our boy Aether, I guess. I'm gonna say he's our first real Santa, because he's the MC. Plot twist, he got a little side quest, like a really long one, where he just delivers presents across Tevats. 
And honestly, why am I imagining Paimon as one of his little reindeer? Yes! That might be a little messed up, but she could fly. She probably has some celestial powers. She'll be fine. <laughs> but I do think he would go the extra mile for the good boys and girls because he's getting paid to do it because it's a quest. <laughs> as for Cushing, I want to put her up here as well. I know it's a hot take because people compare her with Angie Cat, Sassy Cat. But in actuality, bro, every Liyue event, she is the event planner, event organizer. And she always wants to make people happy. That's her whole shtick. And it's also why she loves her job. So I will say to the naughty children, she's going to get a little sassy with them and tell them to do better next year. Get good. But to the nice boys and girls, yeah. I think she would honestly go out of her way to deliver gifts in the US specifically. I don't think she's going worldwide like Aether is, but yeah, she would be amazing as a mall Santa to fight me. And finally, Tiggy, some kids love him, some kids hate him. The parents are also gonna be in the same boat where it's a kind of mix and mash, but to the good kids, he's gonna be like Jesus. <laughs> oh, ooh, and why do I feel like he's gonna like proofread if that makes any sense so when the kid is like yeah i was a good boy i always eat my veggies he's gonna be like hey are you the kid's parents yeah is he always eating his veggies and they're like no he isn't little jason are you lying to santa claus and then tiggy's gonna be like mm, fall shame yo ass is going to hell <laughs> Like, nah, he's gonna scold a lot of the kids, but to the genuine wholesome children, he's gonna be so nice with them. He's gonna be like he was with Kale back in the day. Gonna be a nice Chad-like big bro slash mall Santa. But yeah, I'm still gonna say some kids love, some kids hate. That's my little shtick. As for the placement of this roster, I'm gonna say it's Cushing first, Aether second, Tiggy Cakes third, Al Haytham four. As for first and second, I put Cushing ahead of Aether just because she would mostly be doing this just out of the kindness of her own heart, while Aether, I think, would more than likely need a bit of extra cash to have that incentive to be Santa. But yeah, I still think they'd both be amazing and the other two are self-explanatory, yes. On to the next group of mall Santas. Oh my God. Okay, Barbara would be wholesome as heck. Let's just say it right away. Her as Santa, gonna make so many kids smile. Yes, Christianity. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Sell your soul to the Abyss Order for free presents. Yes, we have Lumine right after Aether. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Daddy Ayato. We talked a bit about him before when it was Ayaka's turn. But him, I think he'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, I think he would be better than Ayaka, actually. <laughs> No, no, that's terrifying! <laughs> Why do I feel like Sina would get so in character for being Mall Santa? Holy shit. So as for this lineup, we're going to start off with Barbara because we got her first. I'm going to say she is definitely a real Mall Santa, a real Santa. Ho, ho, ho. She probably won't sound like that, but you get the idea. <laughs> now, debatably, you could say she might kind of be like Ayaka in the sense that she might lie to kids to make them happy, but nah, she works for the church. Lying is a sin. So I don't think she would do that. And even to the broke kids out there, I think she's gonna hook them up. Like it's not gonna be a situation where only the rich kids get PS5s. Nah, she's gonna go the extra mile, kind of like a charity, if you will. And is gonna give the kids in need some nice presents, yeah. I'm sure some kids would be nervous to talk to her just because of how wholesome she is. But yeah, she'd be some real Santa-esque material for sure. Next, we'll do Lumine, the Abyss sibling. Sell your soul for free gifts immediately. <laughs> now, the thing with her is she's not evil or has malicious intent. So I'm gonna say some kids love her and some kids hate her because she has a wholesome face that I think a lot of parents would trust with their kids. But when she opens her mouth, half the stuff that would come out 
would be low-key kind of depressing. Like, you would expect her to be like, Welcome, what do you want for Christmas? But she's actually like, What do you want for Christmas, kid? Hurry up, I don't got all the time in the world. The Abyss Order's waiting for my return. <laughs> But yeah, she's gonna be very straight to the point, which some kids might appreciate, while other kids who want to open up emotionally are probably just like, but, but can we talk a little longer? She's like, no, get the fuck off my lap. Also, I think she'd be brutally honest with the children, like telling the bro kids, you ain't getting shit. It's just the way the world is. Join the Abyss Order though, it might change some things. <laughs> As for Daddy Ayuto, like I mentioned with Ayaka, the Kamisato Cartel is gonna be a charity, giving out presents to those in need. <laughs> now, but him in the mall Santa chair, bro, all the moms in the mall are gonna go here. They're gonna be like, all right, little Jimmy, ask for your presents, then ask the nice man for his phone number. Mommy wants to talk with Santa in the bedroom lane. <laughs> Only the messed up, down bad moms would do that. But honestly, he's just sociable enough that all the kids I think would vibe with him. Like he's chill too. Just pay the man with bubble tea and he'll do anything. Ooh, yeah. Is he real Santa material? Fuck it. <laughs> The Italian Mafia boss is gonna be the Cartel Santa for the evening. Yeah, we got two real Santas in this group. Just like the last one, we're stepping our game up, yes. <laughs> now, as for Sino, he's tricky because he's the justice boy. He would definitely ask the parents if the kid has actually been good. And if they say no, ho, 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 I heard you were a bad boy this year. If you're not a good boy next year, I'll kill you in your sleep. That was excessive. He's not gonna be that bad. Ooh, ooh. And why do I feel like if the kids laugh at his little jokes, he's gonna instantly put them on his nice list. He throws justice out the window. He's like, you think my jokes are funny little stewards like yeah i think they're hilarious he's like all right you want a new bike i got you papa sino's gonna pass by that house with a new bmx on christmas morning <laughs> yeah so i think it's gonna be wholesome actually and overall yeah you're gonna be a pretty good santa sino wasn't really uh expecting this but yes as for the rankings we have barbara in first daddy ayato in second third place sino and fourth place the abyss sibling lumine yes next mall santa war group <laughs> Why do I feel like Dory would charge so much money? Just for the kids to come up and sit. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, depending on the child, Kale is gonna be bonding with some of these kids. Wait, kids opening up to Kale when she has that bad experience in the past. <gasps> this could be wholesome. Oh, yeah, that's, that's free. free. Next, we have Best Girl, who uh, I'm not gonna spoil where she's gonna be, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh. Wait, Beto would be awesome as a mall Santa too, holy shit. Oh, this is an interesting group because there's a lot of quirkiness to be had here, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna start off with the most simple one of the group. Yoimiya has 100%, the most real Santa energy, debatably on this entire list. I'm not sure yet. She is so freaking good with the children and she'll also go that extra mile to make sure the kids are happy. Like if there is a sad kid that goes to sit on her lap, bro, that kid is a leaving with a hundred grams of diabetes. He is getting all the sweets, all the love from this girl, and it's not gonna end there. Nah, she is going to that kid's house with a whole ass arsenal of things the kid probably didn't even ask for. She's like, all right, you got your PS5? Here's a new gaming PC? Like, bro. She is the Mr. Beast <laughs> of Teva. It would be so precious. Now, where would she get the money to afford all of this? I have no clue, but she is gonna find a way. All the money she makes from being Mall Santa is going directly back at the kids, easily, without a doubt. As for Dory, this is tricky because she would charge some insane admission fees, but she's not exactly a full-out scammer, so I think she would do her best 
to actually make the kids have a good experience, right? I'm gonna say some kids love her, some kids hate her. That might be a bit of a hot take. I'm sure some people want her to go down. Actually, not fucking. <laughs> Even though some of the kids would kind of vibe with her because she is kind of chill when she's not talking about the money, which isn't very often, mind you. <laughs> the mothers and dads are going to be looking at her with the utmost expectation based on the price. And it's just kind of a slightly above average experience for some kids and other kids are probably leaving kind of upset because Dory is going to be breaking it down for them. All right. So daddy makes this much, mommy makes this much, you're not getting a pony. I'm sorry, little Sam. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure the parents are going to be sucking their teeth at her like, and Dory's like, what? I was just telling the truth. Maybe you should get a better job, mom. <laughs> she might get escorted out by security. <laughs> As for Beto and Kale, Beto, I think could be a real Santa. Yeah, because the whole boat motif, like the boat is gonna be her sleigh. She's hype enough to really give the good kids a reward. That's what I think. And she's not gonna be biased though or anything. Like if a kid is naughty, that kid isn't getting shit. The kid's gonna be sitting on her lap like, yes, I was such a good kid this year. She's gonna look at the parents. The parents are just nodding their heads. She's like, all right, listen, you little shit. Maybe come back once you're an actual good boy. Now Elf 1 and Elf 2 escort little Timothy off of the premises. <laughs> like, it's gonna be tough love for the bad kids, but the wholesome love for the good kids. If you're actually eating all your veggies, doing your chores, you should be expecting a little late night visit from Mama Beto. Gonna give you all those nice presents, yeah. Realistically, I think she has the best method of transportation for a Santa-like role, which I think is pretty awesome, yeah. As for Kale, some kids are gonna love her, some kids are gonna hate her. Because she has the social anxiety that I think a lot of the more eccentric children are just not gonna vibe with immediately. But to the quiet kids who are going through shit, bro, once they open up, then Kale opens up, they're gonna be sitting together for like a whole hour. And the line is just huge at this point, but Kale's not paying any attention to anyone else. She is making sure this kid leaves with some life lessons, dog. <laughs> I'm sure the parents of the kids she has the heart to hearts with are gonna go up to her after and just give her all the hugs. Tiggy's gonna be watching from the sidelines like, that's my girl, I raised her way. <laughs> but yeah, as for the final ranking of this Santa war, I'm gonna say it's first place Yoimiya, second place Beto, third place Kale, and fourth place Dory. On to the next group. <laughs> it's the, oh my goodness. I didn't think Yoimiya would be having some competition for best Santa immediately. <laughs> but we have Yao Yao, my god, the wholesomeness. We'll be out of this world, yes, hi. <laughs> Bro, if that was Tartaglia, this would have already been a powerhouse group we got so far. But we got Sucrose, okay. We got baby girl Charlotte. We haven't had many Fontaine characters so far, so this is nice. I think she'd be pretty good. It's kind of hard picturing her at another job besides journalism, though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Bro, I thought that was about to be Shinho, and that would have terrified me. But we have Goro. He's kind of wholesome, yeah. All right, so let's start off with Yao Yao, the smallest real Santa we're gonna have. <laughs> I think she's probably the type that even if you're naughty, like if you're a piece of schmuck of a child, she's gonna talk to you for a bit and you're gonna reconsider your life choices. Like these spoiled little kids are gonna be like, I just want a PS5, I know I'm getting it. Yao Yao is gonna humble them and they're gonna start crying on her little lap. <laughs> The kid is gonna go back to their parents a new child. He's gonna be apologizing to his mom. They're just gonna look at Yao Yao. She gives them the thumbs up. It's gonna be a really wholesome experience, yeah. Ooh, ooh, her and Cushing are gonna tag team the streets with the Santa energy while Beto's kinda going around the world because she has the ship, yeah. 
But no matter who you are, child or adult, you are gonna be leaving with a smile after the Yao Yao experience, yeah. Next we'll do my boy Goro, who I'm gonna say kind of has some of that top tier kind of energy, yeah. Because he's just kind of a nice dude when he isn't in Angie military fox form and when he isn't getting teased by a certain vixen down here <laughs> plot twist goro is the child miko is traumatizing 100 <laughs> percent but nah aside from those two things he's just kind of a chill and dapper dude that i think could get along especially well with kids because he has the fox ears the fox tail they're gonna be like santa what are these ears? Why do you have a tail? And he's gonna sacrifice himself by offering the kids a chance to pet his ears, to pet his tail. Yeah, I think anyone for the most part would get along with Goro. So he'd be a really cool Santa, yes. As for Charlotte, I think she'd be wholesome but gets carried away, yeah. Like her husband sign over here. <laughs> like she'll be having a nice wholesome interaction with a child. But if someone brings up like journalism, the parents are going to be like, um, you're supposed to be talking about presents, about being a good boy. And Charlotte's like, hush, older lady. I'm talking about photography with your son. <laughs> so with that in mind, I do think she'd be a little adjustable as well. That's why I'm going to leave her in wholesome, but gets a little carried away. Yes. And as for Sucrose, it's either some kids love her or some kids don't like her, but I'm going to say she might actually traumatize a child. <laughs> But I think she might accidentally leak like some weird information to a child just because she's not the most socially adept. Like she's going to be like, oh my God, you live in a basement apartment. I have a hilly churl in my base. Like maybe some info would leak. And she talks about her experiments, which might kind of frighten a child. But yeah, <laughs> that's going to be my hot take for soup growth. Even though I love the chick, I am going to put her there. Yeah. As for the rankings of this group, I'm gonna say it's first place Yao Yao, second place Goro, third place Charlotte, and fourth place Sucrosh. But yeah, on to the next team. Da da da, libidi bi boop bop. See, another one of Madam Ping's students, yes! We have Yen Fei, who I think would be pretty good, although a little unhinged, depending on if they're naughty. Okay. Next, we have Fish Swim. I feel like Kokomi, low-key, would be kind of an awkward Santa, but in like a good way, because he's social enough. Right. I've never done this. Oh, uh, Lenny would be top tier as hell, bro. With the kids, yes! <gasps> okay, yeah, he's probably winning this. <laughs> I might have spoken too soon. Oh, this is a competition. No, this is a competition edition. We have Venti, okay. This is really tight, bro. I want to start with Venti and Lenny, just because they're the more interesting ones, right? So, insert joke about Venti smelling like booze and the parents giving him them dirty looks. <laughs> but nah, when it comes to the kids, bro, he would be so freaking good. Remember the whole Razor Windbloom event? Bro, he just has the natural charisma to kind of bring anyone in. Even if he does smell like a bit of booze, the kids are gonna ignore that because they're having such a good time with the boy. And I could easily see him actually being a real Santa. Him hopping on the Devalin Express, delivering gifts throughout Tevat, bro. And honestly, even though he's not the most serious, if I was the parent, I would trust this dude giving my kid life advice. There's people in the comments about to be like, you crazy bonk. He's just so human, it feels, and natural, that I think he would give more natural advice opposed to like Nahida and Zhang Dong. But nah, yeah, I trust him, hell yeah. Then we have Lenny, who would be awesome on the spot. I'm just wondering, do you think he would go around like the nation delivering gifts to kids yes because he's a fucking orphan himself okay nah 
him and Venti are having the biggest war in this mall, dude. They're both gonna have the hugest crowds of kids next to them. They're fighting for who's gonna win, Mall Santa of the Year. And him putting on a little magic show to kind of get the kids to come initially, but they don't stay for the magic. They stay for the suaveness that is Linny. The wholesomeness of the interactions would be legendary, yes. Ooh, ooh. And why can I imagine Arlequino being like his boss? And she's like, yes, very good, Lenny. You're getting an extra bonus to your salary. Yes, quite. Like, he'd also have the incentive to make mom proud, along with making the kids have an amazing Christmas. Dude, I don't know with these two. They're both awesome. But yeah, I do think Linny would deliver gifts after as well, for sure. As for the other two, they're both kind of just average, a little above average. Yen Fei is going to be just like Charlotte. She might get a little carried away, but she's also enthusiastic enough that the kids could laugh and vibe with her. It's just for the naughty ones, she might threaten them with the legal book. But I don't think it would be that bad. She'd hold back till the kids are of age. Once they're of age, ooh, you better watch what you say to this girl. But I do think it'd be wholesome. As for Kokomi, okay, even though some of the kids, when she's a mall Santa, might not like her because her energy is very subjective. She might deliver presents. I could see that. On Watatsumi Island, she'll deliver gifts. She's not going to be like an amazing, amazing Santa based on energy. It's just going to be how nice she is. So yeah, not nationwide Santa, just little island Santa. Yeah. So let us rank this group of characters. I'm going to say in first place, this was really difficult. And I'm surprised Venti's in second in any group in this list. But Lenny's first, Venti's second. Third, I actually put Yen Fei. Just because as a mall Santa in the moment, I think she'd be better than Kokomi. It just Kokomi would also deliver gifts later on. But yeah. Next character. For the next group. Uh <laughs> Okay, I have some hot takes for Scaramouche that might be controversial after, but okay, we're gonna save that for the explanation, because he's gonna be an interesting one. Yeah. Ah! It seems like we're going for the theme of misunderstood characters, then we have Eula. Oh my god. Okay, okay, wait! <laughs> I think Ito's probably got this in terms of like Santa energy, but let's see, who's the last character? This is good, this is really good. I don't know if you got this anymore, wait! Oh! And finally, we have Nahida. This is a bit of a battle royale that is really, oh, I really like this. Wait, I just realized, <gasps> wait, mom and daughter are in the same group. Where's Wanderer, yo bitch ass? Yo mom's here to supervise you. <laughs> Let's start off with the most obvious. Ito could actually be a real Santa, yeah. Him and the Arataki gang are the bootleg real Santas. They have the charisma, they have the energy, and they're probably giving your kids some weird ass presents on Christmas, but it's the thought that counts. And the fact that they're just like a small group of five, probably running their butts off is kind of wholesome as heck. <laughs> now in the mall Santa setting though, where he's interacting with kids there, I can imagine the kids for the most part loving him. There might be a couple of exceptions that don't like him. Like the really intelligent children, the smart kids that are probably smarter than him. <laughs> he might kind of cause some beef with that, but it'd be like friendly beef because they're still kids. Maybe he'd challenge them to an Oni Kabuto fight on the spot. He kind of holds up the line for a bit. Yes. But overall, this is one of those few jobs I would pay Ito a lot of money to do a couple times a year during December. He'd be amazing. As for the rest, Skara? The thing is, him with kids isn't that bad. He might still be a little harsh, but once he notices that he's hurting their feelings a little, he might kind of soften up, kind of loosen his blows, the reason I want to give him some points is because his actual mother 
kind of did a horrible job. Well, she wasn't really his mother, she just kind of threw him in the wild. And a lot of times, kids learn from their parents' mistakes. Not always, but in his case, he wants to be everything that she isn't, so I do think he's gonna be really wholesome in this regard, yeah. Also, this is no shots to A, I mean, it, it kind of is, I guess. I think it's gonna start off with him getting a little carried away, but then he gets to the wholesome side, and maybe he would kind of surprise some of the kids with a little present on Christmas Day. I'm not saying he's a real Santa, though. No, no, no. We're going a little too far if we do that. <laughs> And he's not going to want to take credit if he does give gifts. Like, he's going to be a secret Santa if he does actually give out stuff. But yes, as for Nahida, bro, imagine her watching him be Santa. That'd be so adorable. <laughs> I think she could be a real Santa. Yeah, I could easily see this chick delivering presents throughout Sumeru. Oh! because she can also read their minds. So she knows which kids have been naughty or nice. So she'll give out nice things to good kids and still give out little trinkets to the naughty kids with little notes saying, be better next year. And maybe you'll get that Xbox. <laughs> but yeah, for her as a mall Santa, I can imagine parents being like, um, why is there a child? giving my child life advice. <laughs> These kids are gonna leave Mall Santa Nahida's lap, the most woke kids you've ever seen. She's gonna be like, spread the knowledge I have taught you youngins. But yeah, I do think she'd be a pretty awesome Santa. Nahida, yes. As for Eula, she is probably the hardest character we've had to do. Cause I'm debating on saying some kids would love and some kids would hate her. But I think that's more me looking at her talking to adults. In terms of children, I think she might traumatize a child. Mind you, I'm sure every now and then, like one out of every five kids she'd bond with. Like they'd both be very different. So they'd have that special interaction. But for the most part, like the general public, Public, I think she would scare them with how blunt she is because with adults it's a little different But if you're just saying it how it is with kids who could be really sensitive I can easily see her scaring a child for sure. I think this is probably the most justifiable spot Even though he put Skara all the way up here <laughs> But the thing is he's especially good with kids what I don't think Eula is So let's put the rankings into position I'm gonna say it's first place Ito, second place Nahida, surprising as well, but Ito has more of the childlike wonder to him. I feel like Ito would appeal to kids as a mall Santa more. But yeah, then we have third place Skara and fourth place Yula. Overall, a pretty interesting match. That was really cool. <laughs> Next fight of the mall Santa. <laughs> Oh, okay. Another very interesting character has taken center stage. We have Benny. I think he would be pretty good, because I don't think bad luck can really interfere with this, can it? Oh my, okay. <laughs> I think Risley would be an amazing mall Santa. Bro, he has the suave, chill energy to vibe with the kids. Yes. Okay, well, okay, fun day. Oh, what? We have a battle of the father figures, but which one would be better at interacting with children? We have Nuvillers, okay. Oh my god, no! Yo, the Fontaine War came all at once. This is like the big three, it feels. We have Arlecchino? Okay, so I feel like we have to start with Benny just because of the power dynamic of these three. Bro, this mall is gonna turn into war. Oh, and Benny with the bad luck adding fire to this war. Yes. <laughs> now it's gonna be epic. So Benny interacting with children would be pretty top tier. I definitely don't think he's the mall Santa that goes to your house with presents because somehow the presents would catch on fire before he can even do that. And I feel like he'd be self-aware to know that, so yes. However, he does have the childlike wonder. Like, he's gonna be talking about adventuring with the kids. Maybe he gives them some souvenirs. Oh, oh! And what if a kid has a really sad backstory and starts crying on Benny's lap? So Benny gives the kid his goggles. The really important things he always wears. That would be wholesome as heck. And yeah, it's a pretty self-explanatory one. I don't think anything's burning down 
hopefully. But now, the real cause of the potential fires. Which one of these three is going to be the best at being a mall Santa? I'm gonna say Nouvelliet, no, just because he's kind of awkward and I don't know if he'd be good enough at socializing with the kids. Like he's gonna have really good intentions and is gonna tell the kids how it is, but that might not be the best thing, right? Like the parents are gonna love him, but the kids are gonna be like, what do you mean I'm not getting a new guitar for Christmas? And he's gonna be like, well, the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal has said you've been naughty. <laughs> and then the kid is like, but what do you mean? The Oratrice Mechanique Cardinal d'Analyse. And he's like, actually, it's l'Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal. I'm sorry. The meme needs to die. Please kill it. Sijween, shoot it in the face. But yeah, I think a lot of kids would appreciate his effort, but some of the more like pompous, annoying shitheads might not like Nouvelliet that much, but he's still gonna do everything in his power to make sure the kids at least leave a little happy. Like he gives them some candy. It's gonna be nice. As for Arlequino, bro, she is gonna traumatize a child, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, she is kind of good with kids. Like, remember when she was bathing in the blood in the moonlight? When Lynette almost got a, we're not gonna say that word. <laughs> but yeah, she's really wholesome in a, a bloody way. <laughs> But not just picture literally this exact image on Santa's little chair. She has the resting bitch face mixed with the death stare. All the kids would be terrified to go up to her, but to the brave souls that actually get to interact with Arlequino, I think they'd actually enjoy the experience because she is kind of wholesome if you give her a chance. I know everyone's like, um, she's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Didn't you hear the warmongers dialogue line about her being that like, man, like, man, I don't believe that shit no more. Everyone was assuming she'd be a low number because of the wolf in sheep's clothing, but nah, she's ranked four, bro. I trust this chick with my life. That might just be me horny bonk bonk, but yes. But she is gonna traumatize a kid without a doubt. And Rizly, I think, is gonna be the mall Santa who is a real Santa in the prison, yeah. So he's gonna leave the prison for a bit to go do his mall Santa duties and is gonna make the kids feel amazing and is gonna invite them on a field trip in the Fortress of Meripede. <laughs> because let's be real guys, the Fortress isn't a real prison. It's literally kindergarten version of a real jail. Like let's chill. <laughs> but yeah, he's not gonna invite them into like the working area, just to the entrance, show them what not to do in the future while also giving them a lot of nice gifts. Ooh! And he'd also be the gift giver of the fortress in general. So to the residents, even if they're not children, he might leave some gifts if you've been working hard on your doorstep, yeah. Him interacting with kids is also very wholesome. Even though he looks a little scary, I think the kids would give him a chance. Unlike our Lakino, who could be your sleep paralysis demon, without a doubt. <laughs> but yes, let us rank these characters. I'm gonna say in first place is Rizli, second place Benny, third place Nouvelliet, fourth place our Lakino. I think this one is pretty self explanatory for the most part. Yes, yes. Next team, baby. <laughs> Homo would be an amazing gift giver, dude. Him and Yoi Mia, honestly, bro, that's a power dynamic. Giving out gifts in Inazuma, yes. <laughs> we got a bit of the Inazuma dynamic. We got Hazo, another dapper lad. I feel like he's a little too big brain for them. He's too enough to adapt. Yeah, he'd be fine. Yeah. Hide your kids, put a lock on the chimney, lock your doors. I very much question the kind of gifts Hu Tao would be given to the kids. Might inflict some psychological trauma. <laughs> uh, another interesting one. And finally, we have Chung Yun, the wholesome boy. All right, so I know I haven't mentioned much that this is a competition, right? Between mall Santas. I think that's what's gonna get 
Hu Tao really going in the Christmas spirit? Because she's pretty competitive. Maybe the winner of the mall Santa competition gets some extra money, like a little bonus. And she can use that for the funeral parlor business. So she is going to go all out. With that said, I think it's going to be wholesome, but she's probably going to get carried away. Maybe when she's really bonding with a kid, she starts to tell ghost stories about Krampus. <gasps> Wait, she talks about evil Santa Claus. It's perfect. And she's like, if you're not a good boy, you'll be my next customer. <laughs> Wait, I could see that. But like, maybe she wouldn't take it that far. No, no, no. She kind of like prank them into getting heart attacks, but they won't actually get heart attacks. No, no, no. With that said, even though she gets carried away, I'm actually going to say she is some top tier Ho, 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 energy. I think she would just vibe with kids a lot, even if she is telling them scary stories. Yeah. So even if they leave traumatized, it's not like they're going to specifically hate her. No, they might not like the stories, but her, how could you hate this eccentric crazy funeral director? Yeah. As for Chung Yun, he's wholesome. I don't know if he's social enough to really do a job like this. Like he might get some anxiety, needs a little bit of popsicles. Yeah, ooh, ooh. He's gonna have a cooler right next to his Santa chair full of like lifesavers. So we can just like pero, 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 pero on some popsicles whenever he gets nervous. And he'd also give them to the kids so they bond. Yeah, okay. It wouldn't be that bad. I'm gonna say it's wholesome, but gets carried away in the sense that he's constantly eating popsicles. Like if he ever runs out of that shit, he might kind of start to hyperventilate. He's like, <laughs> too much socializing. Like, no, maybe I'm kind of pushing this a bit, but he is more of the wholesome category. Yeah. As for Hazo and Toma, Toma, 100%. Him, Ito, bro, Inazuma has a really good squad of just gift givers. Like, half of them are up here. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like he would get Ayato's approval. He would be like, Ayato, I want to give out things to people in need. He's like, Toma, this is why I love you. This is why you're my husband. <laughs> but yeah, him and Ayato would be Santa brothers, giving out gifts like Santas for the day. Yeah. But him as a mall Santa in the moment would be amazing. The parents would love him. The kids would love him. Even if you're naughty, he's not going to like threaten you, but he'll humble you with his chadnish. Yes. And then finally, Hazo, probably making all the single mothers quite moist. I think he does have the energy for this. Yeah. He also gives me the vibe that he's a lot of like little girls first crush. Like they see him, they're like, oh my God, he's so beautiful. But he's going to play it cool, right? Going to get those gift ideas, give it to the single mothers and maybe make them not single mothers anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but not nah, it's his social vibe that i think really puts him here just because he's open to all kinds of people especially since he's a detective it's definitely not santa mind you very different occupation but he meets all kinds of people and he's dapper now as for the ranking of this group it kind of feels weird putting chung yun at the bottom but i'm gonna go with this yeah okay so first we have thomas second we have hazo third we have hu tao and fourth we have chung yun they're all really good options for being a mall santa it's just i put hu tao and chung yun a little lower just because they have their little quirks if you will yes but now onto the next guru <laughs> Zhao, let's not traumatize any kid. Oh, wait, I have a sad route this could go, actually. Shit, okay. We'll see, though, we'll see. Woo, woo. Okay, you'll be good, that's Albedo is a dapper ass Santa, bro. He'd be awesome at this, yes. As for the next two. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. D. Luke is a hundred percent bonding with kids with no daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have Lynette. Not quite the same enthusiasm as Linny, but not bad, not bad. Yes. Alright, so we'll start off with Zhao and my little hot take on him. I don't think he's showing up for mall Santa duties because his evil negative karma energy 
badly affects those around him. So, I'm very doubtful every child has a vision when they go up to this man. So I think for the well-being of the children, he is gonna skip Mall Santa days. Even if it is a contract, I think he would still prioritize the well-being of the kids. Yeah. Mind you, we could also debate that he would rush the kids off him so the energy doesn't spread in any bad way. But I don't think he's gonna take that risk, so we're gonna put him there, yes. As for Diluc, I could kind of see him traumatizing a child just because of how kind of unhinged he could be. And he also doesn't have the energy for the mall Santa, the ho 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 enthusiasm kind of shtick, yeah. This is one of those scenarios where Kaya kind of one-ups him in almost every way, like shit. <laughs> Speaking of Kaya, we haven't done him yet. I'm excited for him. But yeah, I think he's gonna be polite, have some manners at first, but once he gets like five or 10 kids that are being little shits, by the end of the day, he's just gonna be like, ugh, what do you want? What do you want for Christmas, little boy? <laughs> Mind you, since he is a nice guy, I could see him playing the role of Santa a little bit, but, oh wait, that's kind of tricky. It's kind of similar to Kokomi, where he could give out gifts afterwards secretly, but as a mall Santa, he's traumatizing a child. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think that is the appropriate route. Albedo, see, he's interesting because he doesn't really have the super energetic energy, but I still think he'd be kind of an amazing mall Santa. Weirdly enough, yeah, because numero R, he interacts with Klee a lot, so he's definitely used to the kids, especially the more eccentric, destructive children. So I think he'll know how to handle those, but he's also just very adaptable in personality. Because even though he's soft-spoken, he kind of changes tunes depending on who he's with. Like how he talks to Sino is going to be different from how he talks to you. Because that's how much of a dapper man he really is, this homunca chunk. And overall, yeah, I don't think he's going to be roaming the streets Christmas Day, giving out the gifts. Because I think he'll be spending that with Klee. But he's still going to be near the bottom, for sure, of some top-tier ho-ho-ho energy. Yeah. I'm actually gonna add a tier here to kind of separate things though. There, we have pure wholesome, which we're gonna add characters like Chungyun. Kazuzu would be pretty pure wholesome. And Albedo, I'll actually put at the top of pure wholesome. I think that's appropriate. And just for the people who want Ayaka here, cause I know damn well, some of y'all are gonna be like, no, she wouldn't lie to a child. It's not something she would do. So whatever, we'll, we'll put her at the bottom. Yes, yes. Now finally, as for this group, Lynette is tricky because I feel like if she was interacting with teenagers, it would be amazing. She'd be the best small Santa. But in terms of like children, I think it's going to be a hit or miss. Some people will like the relaxed energy she has, but others will want her to have more pep in her step which she might be able to pull off for a bit. But once the day is like halfway over, I imagine her going into sleep mode and just kind of being done with everything. <laughs> like she's more of an elf kind of character. Like if Linny was Santa, Frem Frem and her would be the elves. That's my little opinion on that. <laughs> but still, she's gonna put in at least some effort, try to make father proud over here. Yes. Now for the ranking. I'm gonna say Albedo is first, followed by Lynette, followed by Diluc, and followed by Zhao, yes. I'm trying to really focus in on how they are as the mall Santa in the moment, opposed to them afterwards. And yes, that is that group, on to the next! Next, we have the best mom, A. Eh? She's gonna be amazing with children. Oh, no, have mercy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we got a bit of a bloodthirsty competition of traumatizing the children characters. <laughs> we have Shenha. Oh, I kind of want this trend to continue. Let's see, though. I, it's not continuing, yet. This is no roast to my boy Frem Frem. But you know this group is kind of cursed if he's the best Santa we've had so far. <laughs> Shit. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. And finally, we have the fruity stoner dad. My shoo. Wait, why can I easily see stoner doctor man giving out gifts to like hospitals on Christmas? Yeah, him and the little snack. Visit all the sick kids, giving them nice wholesome trinkets. I think it definitely suits his kind nature. But him as a mall Santa, the good thing is he doesn't have to move that much. So he's not going to have a stroke. God bless. But he definitely doesn't have the energy to go full ho, 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 for the entire day. Definitely not. So I'm going to say it's pure wholesome. Yeah. I don't think he's going to go full real Santa in real life. Even if he is giving out a little bit of gifts to sick kids. Because if he was running around like Santa, he would probably die. And I don't want that. And what kind of Santa has a snake around their neck? He has that unique vibe too, bro. It's perfect. As for, we'll do A. Traumatizes a shot. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to traumatize a kid with how blunt she really is. Like, this would be one of the prettiest Santas, yes. And the moms and dads are like, oh, I'm sure she's gonna be nice with little Timmy. And then she's like, Timmy, if this kid keeps bullying you at school, make sure to rip out his throat and decapitate him, dishonoring him in front of his family. And then the kid, the next day, on the six o'clock news, breaking news, child kills other child. And A is at home like, well done, my son. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, this is all headcanon. Don't worry. It's not real. Regardless, though, some kids are going to be running away from her and she's going to go full. Why are you running mode on the kids? I could so see that. bro. <laughs> she's going to do her best, but she's still going to scare some kids for sure. And same with Jenna. I could literally use the same explanation for both. She's going to do her damnedest. Is gonna be really good with some kids, but if a kid is giving her sass, giving her some lip, boy, you better make sure you have child insurance. <laughs> the cops are gonna try to escort her out the mall and she's just like slapping them away like, please, I'm trying to do my job. It's not my fault the kids are pussy. <laughs> but yeah, I do think she's gonna be a little better than A, just for the amount of effort and how she's gonna really try to make some kids days. And I feel like she will. And finally, we have Frem Frem, who I'm gonna say, some kids love him, some kids hate him. It's like that with most of the social anxious characters, where a lot of the social anxious kids would love them, while the hyper eccentric kids would be like, ugh, you're like that kid I bully in class. Get away from me. And Frem Frem's like, ho ho, I'm trying my best. Arlequino's like, hey, uh, Frem Frem, who just said that to you? He points to a little kid. Arlequino makes the kid disappear off the map. <laughs> Don't you bully my children. I swear to God, you best not bully my kids. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Now let's rank this team. In first place, we have Mish Baiju. Second place, Frem Frem. Third place, Shenha. Fourth place, A, the Raiden Shogun. Yes, on to the next team. Next up, we have Ganyu, who is going to be full out try hard Santa. Probably a little too hard. She might kind of intimidate some kids. Even without her being in her intention. Grandma 100, yes. Ooh. Candace has such mom energy for being a Santa, bro. The parents are going to love her because of how straight laced and to the point she is. Yes. Okay, she would be really good, actually. I wasn't expecting to say that. Who else we... That was so close, dude. I think I would have given Farina the win in a heartbeat, but we have Kave, who would also be a really good mall set. Okay. Got a good group so far. Got a really good group overall, yeah. And finally, we have Noel. Very well. Bro, all of these characters are like really hard workers, but they're all gonna have their different approach to being Santa, which I kind of like. Because Candace is the mom energy chick of the group. For with the kids, they're gonna like her similar to how they would like their mother, per se. So she's gonna be really strict. So some of them are like, ew, I hate you, disgusting. But she's also gonna tell it like it is and would definitely leave the kids with some life advice. And I think she would definitely praise the absolute heck out of the good boys and girls. Candace gonna give the kid a bunch of candy, 
They're going to leave super satisfied, but it is going to be a some kids love, some kids hate them kind of ordeal. Yes. As for Noelle, I don't want her to get pushed around by the kids, which I'm not sure if that would happen because I think she does know when to put the foot down. So I'll say it's kind of pure wholesome. I'm not sure if she'll have the ability to detect the lies of the children. Like if a kid's like, yeah, I've been amazing this year. Now give me some candy. She's like, wow, I'm so proud of you. Here's some candy. Low key, that might actually make some of the kids feel bad about lying to her. So they confess that they lied to her. And then she pats them on the head like, it's okay, you told the truth now. You're a good boy. Oh God. <laughs> Wait, Noelle is so wholesome shit. <laughs> Truly peak wholesome mall Santa material. As for Kave, this is gonna be a hot take. I think he'd be the perfect Santa. For Sumeru standards especially, absolutely. Besides for Nahito, who we've already done, he's so selfless, that's the thing. He always puts the needs of others before himself. So if he does see some sad boys and girls come up to him during the mall Santa ordeal, I think afterwards, he's gonna be like, hey kid, Give me your address. I promise Santa will leave you a nice little trinket. Oh, oh, and what if he custom makes gifts for the sad kids that suit them? Oh, bro, that's a hundred times better than any Xbox or shit, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure during the mall Santa like thing, he might get pushed around by some of the kids, might show a bit of sass, but I think he's still gonna be pretty awesome. I would put him in pure wholesome, but since he'll go the extra extra mile, I'm gonna say he is an amazing, real Santa as well. Yes. And finally, as for Ganyu, I think it's gonna be similar to Noel. I'm just more inclined to believe Ganyu might get carried away just because she's not the most familiar with human customs per se. Like she would still try her best to make all the kids happy, but I could see some kids lying to her. Actually, mm, she might be able to detect lies in the children because of her job occupation. So she might scold them a bit in a more harsher way than Noelle would because she wouldn't really scold them. Okay, I'm still gonna say gets a little carried away, but it's pretty wholesome. She would be a chill Santa for the most part. So with that said, let us rank this group. Okay, this one is interesting. I'm still gonna say Kave is first. Candace is gonna be second. Noel third, Ganyu fourth. I'm putting Candace higher up just because as a Santa, even though she's really strict, I think she would kind of be the best suited for this role because she is also wholesome. She just puts her foot down. That's my little take. So she is going to be second, yes. Next team. <laughs> Why do I feel like the Spina just gives out gifts in Poisson on a daily basis? Like, they're so chill, bro. But we have Navia. She'd be an amazing Santa, yes. <laughs> Ooh, that's a Next, we got Madame Farzan. A lot of boomer energy with this Santa, yes. Charlie doesn't know what Saint Nicholas even is at Christmas. Sequoia. Oh, my. Okay. If that was Farina, bro, her and Navi in the same group would be terrifying. But we have Dea, potential Angie Santa lady. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Mother, would you like to step on my scent? And finally, we have Miss Lisa. It's quite the group of Janice, if I do say so myself. Oops. All right, first up, Madam Navia, please walk to center stage so we can give you your mall santa award bro she's gonna have a posse of elves that serve her in the mall unfortunately malus and silver can't be present today because they're in heaven but you'll have minions scattered throughout the mall scouting out the different mall santas to see how well they're doing and they're gonna steal customers to come to navia yeah and the thing is it's not like navia's a bad santa that just wants to steal people's customers. No, she actually is gonna take the time and care about each child that sits on her lap. Bro, I wanna sit on Navia's lap. <laughs> so yeah, if she sees in a child's eyes, depression, sadness, feelings of loneliness, 
but she's gonna close the line for like five minutes. She'll be like, all right, henchmen, close the line. I need to have a one-on-one -on -one with this child. Now what's troubling you, Timothy? Like she'll be an amazing mall Santa. And when Christmas and when Christmas time comes in Poisson, she giving out them gifts. Daya, I'm worried about her punching a child. That's kind of the only thing. Like if someone gets a little bratty with her, she's about to be like, let me show you what the real world's like. And they're like, huh? And she punches them in the face. Dude, do your thing, queen. I'd pay money to see Daya beat the shit out of a child. Hell yes. Parenting doesn't work. Well, physical abuse can't. I'm joking, guys. This is a joke. Can you tell by my expression that you can't see? But yeah, besides for Angie Cat moments, I think she'd just be one of the realest Santas who would vibe with a lot of the kids specifically. Like, she has the energy to be an amazing mall Santa. It's just the temper might get her carried away. So I'm gonna say it's wholesome, but goes a little too far, depending on how shitty the child is. And finally, Lisa, pure wholesome, just for the motherly energy. Like, some kids might be embarrassed to sit on her lap, and she's, like, laughing, like, <laughs> What's wrong, little boy? Like, if these were naughty adults, I would fear for their safety, but since it's just little shit kids, I don't think she's gonna go too far. Like, she's not shocking a child. Hell nah. So I do think, overall, it's gonna be pretty wholesome. Some of the dads are gonna be like, Oh my god, go get that Santa's number for me. I can tell... Under that beard costume she's wearing, she a bad bitch, mm-hmm. Overall, good shit though, yes. And then finally, Farouzan, bro. Farouzan would be a hype as shit, actually. She has some of the ho-ho-ho energy because she's just fun to be around, even though she's a boomer and a lot of the kids would call her a boomer. She probably doesn't even know what that is. So she'd get into a little squabble with the kids, but it's a wholesome squabble. Like the kid is laughing at her and she chases them off of her little territory. <laughs> Wait, that's precious. She's making the kids smile and she's taking it so seriously, yes. And the parents are thanking her like, thank you for making my son smile. And she's like, tell your son he's little shit. I think once she gets used to the feeling of being thanked, she's gonna go into maximum overdrive and start helping all the kids by giving them a life advice. And some kids would laugh at her and other kids would bond with her. So it's a nice mix of two worlds, but she definitely has the energy, the boomer, ho ho ho, energy indeed. Now, let us rank this group. You know this group is OP when Dea's in fourth place, holy shit. I'm debating on changing Lisa and Dea, just for energy, yeah, I think Dea has more of the ho 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 kind of vibe, yeah. So first place Navia, second place Faruzan, third place Dea, fourth place Lisha. Overall, a nice team, yes. Or sorry, not team, bloodthirsty enemies, very good, yes. Next one. <laughs> Punish me, mommy. Whip me with that stocking full of cold, please. So we have Chlorine. I think she'd be... Uh, brain not computing. I don't know how she'd be as a Santa, actually. Oh, that's a bit of a broke Santa, okay. Mona, about to traumatize some of these kids with her fortunes that I don't think she would tell. Nah, too much professionalism and pride for that. Oh, trauma, trauma? Now, I have some hot takes for Rosaria, 100%, but we'll get into that because she is actually pretty good with the kids. She's not bad. Like that. She's good with that kid and a lot of other kids too, yeah. So we'll start with Mona, who's a bit of a complicated conundrum here. So she could actually tell if the kids are naughty or nice by kind of doing a divination, which I can see her doing to charge more money for kids coming to see her. So it's going to be a special kind of Santa booth where she's like, sit on my lap, child. Let me gaze upon the stars. So she's like, yes, you've been a good boy here. Have a 20 pack of Starburst. And the kid is like, 
but I wanted a new bicycle. And she's like, <laughs> well, have you saved a nation from destruction yet? N no. Well, then you best keep waiting, boy. But yeah, she's also chill to an extent, mind you. So I feel like she'll put in a good word with the parents. So low key, this might turn into a whole business operation. It's not even just she's a mall Santa. No, no, no. She's telling the parents the deets that they don't know but want to know. So it's mostly for the parents. <laughs> so I'm going to say it's wholesome, but she might get carried away in terms of like crushing a child's hopes and dreams with her divination. She's like, you've been naughty. You're getting nothing for Christmas for the next 10 years, loser. Like she's kind of blunt like that sometimes. <laughs> now as for Klee, Bakudan, Bakudan, tis the season to be jolly. If Klee was mall Santa, every child is on the nice list doesn't matter what kind of crimes of arson you've done clea is putting you on that good list she's like i'll come to your house with a special gift on christmas so she puts a bomb in front of everyone's doors blows it up the parents are screaming the kid is like clea i mean santa you came She's like, yes, I did. Now here's that new bike. And they're like, thank you, Santa. She's like, don't worry. Thank the Knights of Favonius credit card. Because I stole that to get this bike. <laughs> the parents in the back, you blew up my door. She's like, ho, 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 Merry Christmas to you too. But yeah, I would say she has some top tier mall Santa energy in the sense that she's a child. She'd vibe with other kids. It'd be amazing. But I could see her 100% also giving out gifts because she's just nice like that. As for Rosaria, you could debatably say minimum wage, minimum effort. Dirty looks, traumatizes a child. But when Rosaria smiles and is talking to a kid who she's actually trying to make happy... I can't put her that high just for the goth look and scaring kids upon impact. I'm gonna say some kids love her, some kids hate her. Just because even when she's trying and she smiles and comforts a child, kind of like Razor, some other kids might still get the no feeling. And even though she's trying to be really nice, they're like, I'm scared, she looks scary. Which I feel like might hurt her feelings, but she's not gonna let that show because she's too much of a cold bish to let emotion show like that and after work i can imagine her sitting down with a glass of wine like huh, those kids were a hassle but she's still gonna take the time especially with the sag kids to kind of have that one-on-one -on -one. so some kids would love some would hate and finally Clorind, since we don't know super much about her I kind of feel like she's minimum wage, minimum effort. Yeah, she's just doing the work to get paid, to go home, to have a nice night. Because even though she definitely has her sense of justice, she's kind of chill like a Risley. The sense that work is just work, okay? As long as she brings home the moolah, that's what matters before everything else. So I don't think she's gonna go crazy with trying to make these kids happy. Maybe every now and then, she'll be nicer with a kid that's sad. Kind of like Rosaria, except she does a better job. But yeah, similar to Al Haytham energy here. I think she's just gonna do what she has to and leave. <laughs> but I don't think she'll get many complaints because a lot of the parents are gonna look at her and be like, damn, she look hot as hell. Damn, I'm lesbian now. Like that kind of thing. Now let us rank this group. I'm gonna say in first place is Klee. It might be a hot take. I don't give a schlich. In second place is also a hot take. Screw it. I'm saying Rosaria. Third place is Mono. Fourth place is Clawhind. On to the next group. We only have three more. I might add some NPCs. The last group, but we'll see, we'll see. Oh, not yet, not yet. Next, we got the boy Dane Sliff, who I could easily see traumatizing a child. Absolutely. You're really wholesome. Mm, actually, no. <laughs> oh my. Bro, I'm not sending my child anywhere near Razor. The man might have rabies. No, nah, I'm joking. Um, As a mall fan, though, I don't think he'd be that good, but we'll see, we'll see. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Tartussi's pretty top tier. The toy making king. He might scare some kids, but overall, he's good with kids, so I don't think so. No. That's also really good, yeah. 
And finally, we have Shinobu. I put Ito at the top, and I'm tempted to put her there. But let's see. Let's kind of get into the cast here. So let's start off with Razor, because I feel like he's kind of the more simple of the batch. Yes. I think he's definitely going to be a wholesome Santa that gets kind of carried away, depending on the situation. Like, if a kid, like, bonks him or gets aggressive with him, I can imagine him going feral mode and chasing the kid out of his vicinity and he's like don't come back to territory and the parents are like what is wrong with you and he's like Rrr. but yeah outside of that like every now and then scenario i think he would be pretty good the kids are gonna kind of vibe with him in the sense that he also talks like a child so they could kind of have a similar vocabulary when it comes to matching each other's vibe and also if a kid is being sad i can imagine him comforting them a lot which would be adorable like he pats them on the head like there there it okay i have hard life too bonding moment with razor yes as for dancelift he's traumatizing a child nah he looks too aggressive he would be telling these kids stuff like don't join the abyss if you want to stay alive when you're older and they're like mother and the parents are like stay with him i need a picture he's hot do it right now <laughs> nah the parents are gonna be kind of okay with him but the kids like he's not gonna mess with them bro <laughs> i'm sure every now and then he'll have a satisfied kid and parents but for the most most part i think he's a little far out there when it comes to doing something wholesome like being a mall santa it's kind of rough bro <laughs> but still we don't know that much about him but i'm gonna leave him there now finally tartussy is gonna be an actual santa i think without a doubt you might say he's a little aggressive might scare some kids for sure but he's also a chill older brother so even if a kid runs away from him scared i still feel like on christmas day he's gonna leave them a little present with a little note saying sorry i traumatized you enjoy your new bike and they're like yay but nah the kids who think they're too cool are gonna walk up to this santa and be like oh my god he's so epic and he's like what's good little man you've been a good ass kid and they're like Hell yes, sir, I've been amazing. And he can just bond with like so many different kinds of kids because he has that experience, which is definitely important. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, also he's rich, so he can easily give gifts to literally every kid who wants it, which is perfect, yeah. Him and Yoimiya, I saw this in a comment on my little post recently, would be the ultimate power dynamic of a real Santa Claus. But in both real and mall Santa form, he would be amazing. In my opinion, yes. As for Shinobu, she is chill and adaptable enough to kind of vibe with any child. I don't know if she would go giving gi Actually, yeah, she's gonna join Ito. They're gonna give gifts around Inazuma. I think she has that real Santa potential, yeah. Even though she might not have the most ho 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 energy, she would definitely make a lot of kids happy just by the action she does. Her thoughtfulness, her probably giving you a custom gift, I think would be a really epic thing. Yeah, it might be a hot take that she's up there with her boy, but I'm gonna say that's how it is. Now, as for the ranking of this group... I'm going to say first place Tartusi, second place Shinobu, third place Razor, and fourth place Dangeliff. Yeah. Madam Ping and Cloud Retainer. So now we have three more groups indeed. Next up, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that already, okay. <laughs> Words cannot express my disappointment that Ganyu and Shenha aren't here. Curses! But I feel like she would be such a mom for Chris. Ooh, wait. Oh, that's tricky. Boomer energy too. Ooh! Ki -da -da -da. Yeah, I think this cat girl is gonna be amazing at delivering gifts. Or, Mall Santa. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Ooh! This is a good group so far. Then we got Ning Guang, and finally... <laughs> Damn, bro! 
Yeah, this is one of the best groups by quite a bit, bro. Damn. Guys, I started recording this at 11.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve. It's almost fucking four. I want to go to bed. <laughs> but yes, I need to get something out for you guys. So I'm going to condense this and it will probably be out by 10 a.m. But anyway, <laughs> Cloud Retainer gives me some wholesome but gets a little carried away energy. Just because a lot of the kids are probably laughing at her lack of knowledge knowledge about certain things and she's like what you say to me just you wait my two daughters can mop the floor with you but i'm a passive healer so i won't get aggressive but i will at your face but nah, I do think it would be a nice thing for her to kind of get accustomed to different kids that aren't her own. Because I feel like she knows nothing about a lot of aspects of humanity. So her being a mall Santa really is going from 1 to 100 real quick. Like, she probably doesn't know what Christmas is. So huzzah, here you go. But due to our kind of lack of knowledge, I'm gonna say she's here just because she would make some of the kids laugh at her unintentionally. But still, they'd be having a good time, which is what's important. As for the other three, I can easily see Kaya being the secret Santa of Mondstadt. The thing with him is he's not gonna wanna get the recognition for giving out gifts. I think it will be a secret thing. Like he goes roof hopping, just chucking things into people's chimneys. And the kids are like, mom, look, a present. The parents are like, what? I didn't pay for that. Did you steal that? And they're like, no, I asked Santa. And they're like, nani? But yeah, maybe he'd get some uh, deluxe funds, kind of embezzle the man a little bit to give to the children who have been good this year. Yeah. But him as a mall Santa as well, bro, the parents would throw their kids at this man because he is suave and dapper and my goodness, they think he'd look like a snack for a Santa. But yeah, he'd also get along with all the kids because he's a bit of a mischievous dude. If some of them are naughty, he's gonna be like, listen, you're not naughty unless you get caught. So don't get caught, okay, kids? <laughs> then we have Kiradada, who I don't think is gonna know much. I'm gonna say she's kind of pure wholesome. Yes, she could be a real Santa in the delivering sense because she's the Amazon driver, basically. I don't think she would do that on her own though, no. If Miko wants a little project done for Christmas, she might get Kidadada to do that, but of her own free will, I don't think so. But she would still be a really chill Santa. However, someone like me who has the cat allergy would probably stay away. So there'd be a little warning for allergies. But yeah, she just has the peppy energy. She's chill. I think it'd be a nice experience. And finally, we have Ning Guang, who is gonna vibe with so many kids, bro. Because she started from the bottom, now we're here. So if some broke kids come up and ask her for shit, she's gonna be like, all right, listen, I'm gonna make an exception for you this one time and get you your Christmas present because I'm rich. But nah, for the future, you gotta work hard for the gifts you desire. And they're like, I promise Ning Guang. She's like, good, I better see you in college in 10 years, boy. <laughs> I think she'd be a bit of a Santa of Li Yue. Both her and Cushing and Yao Yao. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Beto, her wife, yes. <laughs> All the kids who can't afford things, she would get them presents, but more importantly, she would give them life advice. And she's also chill enough, despite being rich, to kind of be friends with anyone. So she would vibe with the kids. But now let's rank this group. I'm gonna say in first place, it's Kaya, second place, Ning Guang, third place, Kiradada, and fourth place, Madam Cloud Retainer. But it's still a really good group considering she's at the bottom. But yes, next team, we only got two left. <laughs> Bro, I am not letting my child go anywhere near Mall Santa Diona. I don't think so. You ain't scaring my kids. Uh. Then we got Ye Lon. I really can't see her doing much. Because I don't think she, like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, that's better, that, that is better. Next up, we got Jin Yan, who is by far the most Santa energy we've had so far. And finally... Okay, okay, that's good. Shade would have been in the second half, but nice. 
And lastly, we have Amber. Understood. Now I'm gonna start with Yalon because I think she's simple. I don't think she's showing up for mall Santa duties. She's the type who values her own time way too much. If you tell her how much she's gonna be making as a mall Santa, bro, she is not showing up to this shift. 15 an hour? Pfft, I make 300 an hour working for Ning Guang. Oh, oh, and she can help deliver presents with Ning Guang. I could see that because she's fast as heck, but her as a mall Santa, nah. She ain't showing up for shit. As for Diona, I feel like she's just gonna be telling kids, do not become an alcoholic in the future. And the kids are like, what's an alcoholic? And she's like, my dad, look at your parents. One of them is probably an alcoholic too. And she is gonna be getting dirty looks from the parents, potentially traumatizing a child. But I think for the most part, the parents are just not gonna like her for the wording she uses. Especially if it's one of those booths where the parents go with the kid nah this isn't working out <laughs> now as for the good two amber i could just see being some top tier ho 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 energy debatably you can say she is a santa of monstat but we already have enough Santas for the day. We're gonna have one more, but we'll talk about that after. <laughs> and same with Jinyeon, actually. I think they'd be in the same tier for their energy. Amber is such a peppy fun chick that she is gonna vibe with literally any child. The kids are about to be like, can you be my big sis? And she's like, ho, 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 you have an actual sister. And they're like, yeah, but they suck. You're awesome. <laughs> I'm sure the line for her booth is going to be massive. The parents are going to be giving her like Tim Horton's gift cards. <laughs> nah, that was a weird thing my mom did when I was small. Is that every time I had a good mall Santa, she would give them a gift card. It was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, she'd be awesome. Same with Jin Yan. She's a bit rebellious, which would definitely definitely please another kind of crowd like if a kid is going through some stuff she's gonna be like just do it don't let your dreams be dreams i promise you'll get that bicycle which i think would be kind of a nice thing some of the parents might not be the biggest fan of that but the kids would love her i don't think she's gonna get that many dirty looks so we're gonna leave her there. This was a very simple one, actually. Let's rank them. I'm gonna say Amber is first, Jin Yan is second, Diona is third, only because Yelon didn't show up. <laughs> but now, as for the final group, which is, holy shit, a powerhouse group, my god. Jean is the weakest one by far, as being a mall Santa, which says a lot to the whole diversity of this. So, I think Jean is gonna be wholesome, but gets a little too motherly in some situations, which in this scenario just means getting carried away. Like, she's gonna be talking with a kid, and the topic of, like, the parents' jobs gets brought up, and she's gonna be like, now listen, your parents work really hard for you. Like, I don't think she would bond with a child as much as the parents would love her. Because the parents would adore Jean without a doubt, because of how much of a role model she is, and she would be a good example to the kids, but that's not really the vibe you really want when going to see a mall Santa. Like, she's too by the book that I don't think she'd get that close with any kids. Still not bad overall, just gets a little carried away with certain topics, I can imagine. As for the last three, I don't know which one's gonna be the best. Let's do Nilu first. She is top tier wholesome. I think she would give out gifts. Honestly, all three of these characters, I could see giving out gifts. Like, yes, Madam Ping giving out gifts with Yao Yao on Christmas would be so adorable, dog. <laughs> Just throw Yenfei into the mix as well. Truly, some family bonding. Absolutely. But Madam Ping is gonna be that wholesome old lady Santa that the kids can't even get mad at. At first, they might think she's a little boring, but once she drops, like, some super deep life advice that even a kid can understand, they're just gonna see her in a new light, because she is pretty awesome. And yeah, even though she doesn't have the most pep in her step like she used to, I think she'd be an amazing mall Santa and a good real Santa as well. As for Nilu, bro. 
her giving out gifts in Zubair Theater, I feel like just happens every year because of how good of a person she is. And I think it'd be very similar to Barbara in the sense that like halos would be radiating from the back of her. Like, and I feel like she would just know what to say to the rebellious kids to get them back on track. Because she has a lot of big sister energy to her too. Yeah, she'd be an amazing mall Santa and an amazing real Santa as well. And finally, Farina. I was debating and putting her in the second tier, but I could see her also giving out gifts. But her as a mall Santa, I think her childlike wonder side would get along with a lot of kids. Because of how creative she is, she's gonna definitely tell the kids to follow their dreams and their passions. Like what they actually care about. She's gonna be like, your parents want you to be a doctor, but you want to make music? Screw your parents, do what you want. <laughs> like the parents might give her some dirty looks, but the kids would leave hugging her. They'd have a new best friend kind of shtick, yeah. And she would give out gifts in Fontaine. Honestly, I could see Nouvelliette being her little reindeer henchman. <laughs> so let's rank this final group. I'm gonna say it's Nilu in first, Farina in second, Madame Ping in third, and Jean in fourth. First and second, you might be able to interchange, but Nilu's wholesome energy just kind of narrowly won this for me, yeah. All right, guys, holy fucking shit, this was long. This is about to be two hours or more. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this mall Santa tier list. I'm very busy for the holidays. For the rest of the month, the only videos I'll probably have out are just the rest of the Christmas parties. We have four more parts, but with that in mind, guys, take it easy and happy holidays.